hello students hope all of you fine so today i am going to discuss the line by line analysis of the essay the virtue written by william somerset mom so in my last video i have already uh, told you a little about a bit about the author as well as about the summary of the story so today i am going to discuss the line by line analysis but before starting the analysis of the story i want to inform you the characters of the story so the main character or the protagonist of the story is the verger so the verger is nan but albert edward forman and another one character is the vicar vicar means the father of the church who has been recently appointed in st peter's church which is located at neville square of london and the third character which is little bit mentioned in the story is two church warden the two church warden has been working since the last 16 years along with the verger means albert edward forman and after that another one two character who's who play who plays uh, a, um, a little role in the stories are Uh, Albert Edward Forman's wife and another one is the manager of the bank in which bank Albert Edward Forman had deposited more than 30000 pounds after becoming a successful businessman in the sector of tobacconist and news agent so so this is the brief uh, information about the characters of this story now let's start our discussion from the first paragraph so here i'm going to read out there had been a christening that afternoon at saint peter's neville square and albert edward forman still wore his verger's gown he kept his new one its folds as full and stiff as though it were made of sorry it were made not of alpaca but of perennial bronze for funerals and weddings st peter's neville square was a church much favored by the fashionable fashionable uh, uh what uh, fashionable for these ceremonies and now he wore only his second best he, he wore it with complaisance for it was the dignified symbol of his office and without it when he took it off to go home he had the disconcerting sensation of being somewhat insufficiently clad he took pains with it he pressed it and ironed it himself during the 16 years he had been verger of this church he had had a succession of such gowns but he had never been able to throw them away when they were worn out the complete series neatly wrapped up in brown paper lay in the bottom drawers of the wardrobe in his bedroom so what the author said in this first paragraph so the author begin the first line of the story with one particular occasion and what was that occasion that was the day of christening means a name given ceremony to a new born child so in the world of uh, christianity it is known as a baptism so baptism means to give a name to a baptism means a new born child is going to be given the name so it's a name given ceremony on that particular afternoon in st peter church which is located at neville square and neville square is one of the famous place of london and so now we come to know that the story begins at the church that is st peter so in that particular afternoon that was the special day because a christening ceremony 
had arranged by the parents of one particular child and on that ceremony the verger was very busy with his works. So, and that the verger used to wear, uh, he has one particular type of uh, attire that is uh, the gown, he used to wear the gown being a verger in St. Peter Church and specially he used to wear the uh, uh, gown uh, uh, during the, during any type of occasion in St. Peter Church. So, being a uh, occasion there, so uh, how the author narrates here the appearance of the verger, he was still wearing his the second best one gown. So, uh, then uh, what happened? So, uh, he, he kept his new one, its pole as full and stiff and though it were made not of alpaca but of perennial bronze. So, on that, on that particular occasion, he kept his first one gown, means the new one gown and he chose to wear the second one. And how he treated with all his gown, it, it, um, it seems not made of uh, alpaca but it met with the perennial bronze. So, now what is alpaca? Alpaca is a domesticated Peruvian animal with long fine woolly hair and usually brown and white coloring. So, the wool of alpaca here used to make the gown of the verger. But how the verger treated his gown? It is uh, just like made with the perennial bronze, means with the um, what is one costly metal it has been made by the costly metal like perennial bronze he treated like that but in real sense his gowns are made by the alpaca means the wool from the alpaca animal and uh, for funerals and weddings St. Peter Church um, which was a uh, church favored by the fashionable for the ceremony so St. Peter Naval Square was regarded as the favorable place for performing ceremonies by the fashionable people. So, that is why Albert Edward Foreman too wore his second best gown instead of the first one because he has a much attachment towards the profession as well as the dresses or the attire related to his profession here. So, that is why he kept the first one and chose to wear the second one on that particular afternoon. So, how he used to wear his gown? He wore it with complacence for it was the dignified symbol of his office and without it when he took it off to go home he had the disconcerting sensation of being some insufficient clad. So, whenever after uh, uh, completion of his work when he uh, when he returned to his household at the time how he felt you see he felt uh, that um, he felt that his uniform was the dignified symbol of his office and without it he felt somewhat insufficient. I mean when he uh, put off the gown at the time he felt like that was something I have lost. So, he, he felt incomplete at that moment. So, then uh, he took pains with it. So, whenever he take off uh, the gown uh, from his body just before leaving the church towards whom at that time he felt very pains because he has a much attachment and he feel that gowns his gowns are the dignified symbol of his work so it makes him much pain at that moment so and uh, Albert Albert Foreman yeah, used to take care of his gown very well so how he used to take care of his gown you see here uh, as the author mentioned. So, uh, you see he took wood paints he pressed it and ironed it himself he used to press it ironed it himself. So, during the last 16 years he has been working as a verger and at the same time he had a succession of such gown of the last 16 years but he never thrown up anyone 
though it might be worn out or complete serious. Means since the last 16 years he has been taking care of all the gown. So how much gown he accumulated since the last 16 years he never thrown off any one of them and still he used to keep by neatly wrapping up um, with uh, uh, wrapping up in a brown paper and lay in the bottom drawers of the wardrobe in his bedroom. So from this point of view it is very clear to us that the verger treated his official gown as a dignified symbol of his work and he, he preserved even the old and worn out gowns with care and used to keep in the bottom drawer of his wardrobe. So, uh, from this first paragraph, one question is very important that how the verger treated his gown. So, now I hope you understand a little bit from this paragraph. So, now I am moving forward towards another one. Paragraph. See, the verger visit himself quietly, replacing the painted wooden cover on the marble front, taking away a chair that had been brought for an infirm old lady and waited for the vicar to have finished in the vestry so that he could tidy up in there and go home, presently show him walk across the, ch uh, chan um, across the chancel genuflect in front of high altar and come down the easel but he still wore his cash shop. So after the completion of uh, that particular occasion of christening, now all the uh, guests uh, already left out uh, the church after the finishing of the function. Now the verger visit himself silently. So why, where he was busy? He replaced the painted wooded cover on the marble font and took away a chair. The chair was brought for an infirm old lady. So now again he, uh, he engaged himself to um, take place the same chair where it was earlier. So which was brought for an inf uh, infirm old lady. So after doing this, he waited for the vicar to have finished in the vestry so that the verger could go there and clean the spot and after that he could go home. So when uh, after completing all this work, um, now he was waited for, uh, uh, waited for uh, the vicar one because he has to finish his work to tidy up the uh, tidy up the vestry room after that he has to go back to his own household that's why he was waited for here uh, for the vicar you see after doing all this he waited for the vicar to have finished in the vestry so that the verger could go there and clean the spot and after that he got he could go home so when it was going on in his mind what to do and where, uh, where to go himself, right moment he showed that uh, presently he showed him walk across the channel means now the vicar. Now he showed the vicar was walking coming down the easel. The verger was a bit annoyed seeing the vicar still with his ankle length garment so ankle length garment here mean, means the cassock his cassock so like the verger the vicar also used to wear one type of uh, one type of attire uh, um, attire uh, like uh, like the verger's gown uh, so being a father he also one particular type of dress coat that is uh, uh, cassock means the ankle length garment so why the vicar, sorry, why the verger was a little bit annoyed to see that uh, vicar with uh, by wearing his cassock? It means still he will be let to complete his work here because the time is already over of that particular day's uh, uh, routine. So now it's time to return back to his own household. That's why after uh, after showing uh, the vicar with his uh, cassock. 
the idea already gather in his mind that he will be in a little late again for moving towards the home after all still this vicar is not finish his his work that indicate to verger here so after that what happened you see what's he hanging about for the verger said to himself don't know i want my tea the vicar had been but recently appointed a red faced energetic man in the early 40s and albert edward still regretted his predecessors a clergyman of the old school who preached leisurely sermon in a silvery voice and dined out a great deal with his more aristocratic parishioners he liked things in church to be just so but he never fussed he was not like this new man who wanted to have his finger in every pie but albert edward was tolerant saint peter's was in a very good neighborhood and the parishioners were a very nice class of people the new vicar had come from the east inn and he could not be expected to fall in all at once with the discreet ways of his fashionable 